guys, welcome back to Nat One Videos. I'm Michael, and today I'm going to be doing a straight up no frills, no camera skills tutorial on how to make one of these dwarven pillars. And my cat says hello. I posted my carve of this on the Tabletop Crafters Guild earlier in the week, and I got so much positive feedback. I was really encouraged and I was just like, okay, I'm gonna share this knowledge. It's a lot simpler than you think. Um, it does take a little bit of practice to get some of the cars right. So yeah, we're gonna make some dwarven pillars. Okay, first things first, what I'm using is XPS foam, which, you, which I bought from an insulation, underfloor insulation store in the UK. Um, I'll put a link in the description below. Um, it's 20 millimeters thick. So I cut two pieces that are 20 millimeters wide so that whenever I put them together I've got 20 millimeters that way, that way and that way it's a square. In terms of the height it's just over five inches tall. Um, I eyeballed it when I cut it um, the first time and then I just stuck with the same measurement for the second one and now for this one I'm going to do it exactly the same way because I know exactly what to do with it so um, so I'm going to hot glue that together you know how to hot glue things guys so whenever I come back I'll be ready to carve okay okay we're back guys so you can see that I've done quite a shoddy hot gluing and glue spilled out of the sides but that absolutely doesn't matter for this carve because it'll be getting carved off I'm using a wood carving knife. I've been wood carving for quite some time now and that's where I kind of got the technique. I just thought why don't we try that on some foam. Um, uh, this would be very handy to have but you could use a, an X-Acto knife for sure. Um, this is just really made for the types of cuts that I'm doing. So straight away I'm just going to get into it and kind of demonstrate what I do. First of all I'm going to do uh, the top parts of, of the carve. So. Okay, very easy. So the next cut I'm gonna do is a small line down in this direction. Just, I need to keep checking that my camera's on because I've had problems with that before. Anyway, I'm gonna do probably from about there down. Easy to cut out. So one thing just to make sure guys is um, that your, your blade is very sharp. If your blade isn't sharp, you start to get bits of the carving that kind of come away in a way that you don't want to. The thing is though that what I noticed is that I did one of the carvings with like that and it didn't matter because once you paint it um, it just kind of looks like an old stone thing that's been hewn which is kind of the way you want it to look anyway so those things don't really seem to matter. Okay so that's the, the basis of the pillars ready. Now everything needs to be carved into that. And the first part that we need to figure out is where we're going to put the face. So this is my best side in terms of how the gluing has gone. So I'm going to make this my nose. And how we do that is we're going to do a straight cut here. Okay. Now the next thing that we're doing to get in is the eyebrows of the piece. A bit about a third of the way but the thing is I would not worry too much about actual uh, measurements as opposed to how this feels to you because I think it would be better if your carving doesn't look exactly like my carving because it's gonna be your carving now that we've got that nose line in we can do just a straight line cut up to the top there okay so and this is going to gradually, that can actually get tapered down all the way to the bottom. And this is gonna be a process of, but this is gonna become your beard eventually. So let's do a straight cut. Now, 
Whenever I'm cutting this nose, don't cut in at an angle like this. You want to cut as if you're cutting straight down, but at this angle. Does that make sense? Cut straight down and in, otherwise you're gonna cut the nose off, okay? So, straight down. And be very careful with this cut because you might lose some of your bits of foam. Down to about there. Like so. And the exact same thing on this side. Now, be careful with these cuts because you can break off bits of foam quite easily. Like I said, if you break bits of foam off, it's not going to be a disaster because, you know, the hewn stone look. I mean, look at the, the Sphinx in Egypt uh, had its nose broken off. So stone, if you make a little mistake, just own the mistake and then it's going to become part of the cool carving. Once you get the basic shape in, there is going to be lots of little adjustments and whittling. I'm just going to show you guys the main cuts and do some fast forwarding at certain points as well. Okay, so that's the main cuts of the nose. We're then going to do another cut for, these are going to be for the eyebrows, straight down all the way across. Normally if I was whittling a piece of wood to make a wood spirit or something, I would whittle this out here and I'd make a little hat and stuff, but we want it to become a pillar, so I'm not gonna whittle that part yet. What we're next gonna do is we're going to do the, the beard. So the beard we want to end, see where this corner is? About here and roughly about here. So that, that can even come off a little bit more. So you can see, you can just make adjustments as you go. You know, don't be afraid to just cut off more and more little pieces. You're going to be covered in these little bits of foam by the end of the process anyway, so. Here we go, first beard cut. Boom. Second beard cut. And it does cut through quite, if you've got a nice sharp knife, it cuts through the hot glue very easily. Once you've cut that line, this is where you do cut at an angle. We're going to cut out another angled line like this and again the exact same on this side and there's going to be lots of moments where we come back and smooth things off and like that but really I guess what this tutorial is about is giving you the basics and then you can use your own artistic license to make your own personal dwarvish design. These have to be quite deep, these um, little eye holes, because then you don't need to carve any eyes because it just looks like a really stern looking dwarf. Next cut is find center point, so that'll be below the tip of the nose and I'm going to carve around like this to a point. That's going to be the moustache, okay? So boom, boom, and down, and same again. Like this is why this carving knife is so useful. So these are very cheap on Amazon, by the way. Again, I'll put a link in the description below to where I got these, and I got basic level carving knives they're not expensive and I'll put a UK link but you'll be able to find the same link anywhere okay so now I'm going to start whittling away this beard because it's protruding this shouldn't be sticking out like that so I'm just going to come down and get that to come below that so we want this to go back if you can see on this one a little bit beyond the lip of the pedestal I think it's called so come in like this Okay, now, the same thing that we did on this side with that angular cut, we're going to do on this side, like so. And as you can see, this thing is starting to come together, okay? The next steps we're going to do is something called a V-cut and we're going to do a V-cut 
cut. Well, I'll just do the V cut where I'm going to do the V cut, and you can see. So one. The reason why it's called a V cut is you cut in like this. It's like a V. Okay, so that's going to be part of the face. Another V cut. Now all of this will be tidied up again later. It's going to get thinner. It's going to get smaller, and we're going to do another V cut here. This is just so you can start to see the face. Okay, now where you've done that V-cut, you can now get your knife and come all the way down to the bottom. So, we're getting there. Now, this beard is protruding, it looks like he's just sticking out his chin or whatever. So we just gradually carve off a little bit, bit of this stuff. Make it a little bit thinner. And that's not a natural line, so I'm gonna make this curve around a little bit. that out. So there will be all sorts of little dips and mistakes that you make but trust me once you put the Mod Podge and black paint on at the end all that just disappears. It just looks like stone. It's great. I love that stuff. So that's a tip obviously. I'm sure everyone watches Black Magic Craft but um, yeah I got that from Jeremy over Black Magic Craft. Really cool channel. If you haven't heard about it you should get over there and check him out. So next we're going to do the mouth, so we want um, a lip. Now that is a little bit fiddly to cut out, but once you've got it, you've got it. Again, just round off the edges a little bit. Next thing, I still think it's probably a bit too protruding. Use your own judgement guys uh, on exactly what's going on. Take the essence of the tutorial and do your own thing. Okay, so next thing is we're going to make sure that we've got a lip. That's going to be his lip. And then we're going to come in like so. So a nose doesn't naturally come down from the bridge like this. A nose is like a triangle into underneath your brow. So we're going to cut from here down into the brow, like so, okay? And then a few extra cuts just to make it a bit better, and then no one has a pointy nose like that, well, not in my family. Anyway, um, so we're gonna round off these edges. You can see where the base of the nose comes back to here. We're going to cut in so that it comes right back to there as well. So down. Don't be afraid to make cuts because you just end up looking. You think something looks really good and you might make a mistake or whatever, but I find with carving that you just got to go for it. If something doesn't look quite right, just go for it. That's the best way to do it. That is actually, in my opinion, much, much better. Okay guys, so I just stopped my camera and I had a look at that footage that I've done so far and I realized that I've been holding my hands way up here. I should hold them more down here so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. Sorry about that. And it might have been ever so slightly out of focus, but I still think you can see all the main cuts, but I'm just gonna do a quick review of cuts so far. Uh, so first cut is straight into the bottom of the nose. Second cut is straight up at an angle into the bottom of the nose. Third cut is right eyebrow or left if you're left-handed. Fourth cut is left eyebrow. Fifth cut is not in but straight down triangle down here. Sixth cut triangle, okay? Those are your main face cuts. Then scoop out the eyes, scoop out the eyes. 
Then we're on to moustache cut, moustache cut, angular moustache cut to make a recess, angular moustache cut to make a recess. Same thing for inside of the moustache, like so. Okay, I think that's enough to catch you guys back up. Okay, so we've got this far and I am now actually wanting to start focus on the actual dwarven pillar aspect of it. So we're gonna do these sides first. Now I've burnt my XPS foam there a little bit, but that's not gonna matter. That's just going to add to the effect in a minute, but we'll do this clear side first. So let's find the middle point. And to either side, you want a couple of millimeters either side of the middle point. Middle point. I'm just gonna do a little line down like so, and then a little point like so. A lot of these cuts that I've noticed, I was like, oh, maybe this isn't going to go so well whenever I was noticing little bits flaking off and things like that. But really, once it was painted, it just added to the effect. So do this confidently. Now, what you want is you want to get probably about two or three millimeters in. We're basically going to carve all of that out on this panel around these little shapes here, so. All right, at this point, what you will notice is you're gonna start cutting into your, um, the face, and that literally doesn't matter because that's what we, I was intending from the start. You, you will cut into your face, because it's too wide anyway. So you might as well just go ahead and cut off part of the face. Now this doesn't look too neat, but this is a very awkward kind of thing. And you're just gonna keep going until you manage to get it all smooth. Now guys, I really should mention that these are sharp knives, exacto knives are sharp knives. Um, if you're gonna be carving, you're gonna be making carve cuts that pull towards you like this. You gotta be extremely careful. If you're not confident, just don't do it. So that just kind of looks like hewn stone. So it's not a big deal. These cracks and stuff will end up looking like old worn stone. So it actually works out pretty, pretty okay. Then we're gonna do the exact same thing again, but a little bit wider. Now another, I'm just going to time lapse any of these bits and you can see exactly what's going on. Okay, so very quick. Now, as you can see, there's lots of little bits broken out and stuff, but honestly, when the Mod Podge and black paint go in here, you're really not gonna notice that. That's what I find anyway. So, another time lapse. At this point, it's gonna start feeling like you're getting close to the face and all sorts of stuff like that. Just carry on, keep doing the same process. Carve all of this off if you need to. Don't, don't worry about it, it's all gonna to come together. Okay, that's the back corners, dwarven pillars look 
done. Dwarven pillar like this at the top here at the front and here, but not at the bottom, okay? Still a little bit more of the dwarven design on the pillars to do. Here we go. So remember the guys, these pillars are ancient, so they've seen wars, they've seen battles, you know, they're not supposed to look brand new, so they've got bits chipped off them, all of that. So just be confident with your Cuts. If things you're like, oh, what's going on? This is starting to look bad. Trust me, it's going to look good. So there's little cuts like this, these that are, you know, tricky to make. Um, I've been carving this face for quite a while now, so I kind of, it's almost like second nature to me, but it doesn't really take that long to get um, proficiency down for this. Um, maybe took me a month or so before I was really carving well this kind of face. So just try, just try. We'll get there eventually. There we go. That is exactly the way we want it to look. Maybe it's slightly out of balance here. But we can tidy it up at the end. Okay, so this point for the eyebrows is wrong. We're just gonna cut that off and then we're gonna cut a triangle in like so. I'm gonna carve that out like so. See, we're not that far off now guys, are we? Um, but you can see that it's thinner so we're gonna have to thin down the face. So the way we do that is more V cuts. So, and then we want the face to be a bit curved, so we're going to do another recut. So what I find is that every single one's looking slightly different. They all they all take on their own unique personality, which is really fun. Okay, so now I think that on this one the moustache is coming out too wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it come in like so. And then I'm just going to do a cut beside the nose to deepen the, the shadow in the, in the nose. So just watch this cut you're gonna notice a difference here. So I'm gonna come in at the side, like so. Okay. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so now it's a matter of taste, um, how you kind of carve the face. That already looks pretty cool. Once it's painted, it will look cool, but I want my face to be a bit rounder, so I'm just gonna round it off. Um, this sharp edge on the mustache isn't great, so we're just gonna do an angular carve around the moustache, same here, so then you might want to start you know looking at the symmetry of your piece, 
So here I've got a bit of the, the base. So I want to cut in here and make that similar on both sides. So these are square eyebrows at the minute, so we're going to do angular cuts and we're kind of, you know, um, similar sort of technique to when, when you're cutting wood for bridges or doors, you don't want them to look like lollipop sticks. This is a similar sort of thing. You round it off so it looks all a bit more angular and, or less angular and more natural shapes. You see, that's a nicer brow. So I far prefer that to this square one, so. And remember, it's your own personal tastes. Once you've carved this, no one else can tell you it's wrong because it's your own thing. So this is just the way I do it. And I haven't seen anyone else do this, which is kind of cool to be able to share this knowledge. I've seen similar carvings like this on wood, but nothing specifically for tabletop gaming uh, on XPS foam, so I'm quite happy about that. There we go, so now we've got some little flakes of foam. I'm just gonna carefully scrape those out, but trust me, that doesn't matter. That's gonna to add to the effect once Mod Podge goes on. Okay, I'm gonna clear, clear this mess up a little bit. Static foam everywhere. This is where Jeremy's tip of getting a shop vac would have been a great idea, but maybe I'll get there someday, shop vac. First, I need to have a shop. I'm currently set up in my kitchen table. Right. The back is done, the front is almost done. Now, these are details that are going to help your piece a lot. We're going to do make the beard really look like a beard. So, the way I do that is one cut like this. So, see that little line? And then ever so slightly change your angle, and you want to take a sliver out that side. So, that's a sliver that side, and then the exact same thing on the other side. So to speak, like that. And try and do them not in really regular looking way. Any little pools of foam are gonna look like broken stone. So where you can, offset the lines so that it kind of gives an irregular look. You don't want it being too regular, but it'll look good, whatever. I just think some irregularity is nice. Um, next, we're just going to slightly carve the nose a little bit just to make it a little bit even on both sides more to my liking okay guys and as you can see it really is would sit quite nicely along these two um, now we are in the very last 
stage, which is, you can see in these ones, I've got some cracks, some extra bits cut out and stuff. We're gonna just really go into them and make them look beat up. So, and yeah, the way to do that is randomly. Just beat stuff up. And again, with, the, with these um, crack cuts, I find that once you've done one cut, you come in with another angle and cut the sliver out and give you a deeper cut. Okay, so I'm gonna do another beating up time lapse. I'm even going to beat up some of the face. Look at this, cut it in there, bang chip out of his face. Okay, this one's been right in the middle of a battle, but we're not done yet. The old tinfoil ball trick that everybody loves to use so much. Let's just go for it. Boom, boom, beat them up. It's weird once you've put a whole bunch of work into something like this uh, to try and make it look really more beat up than bad. That's what I love about it though. Okay. And that's that guys. That is how to carve the XPS foam dwarf character a la Michael Parson at Nat One videos. But we're gonna paint it just for fun. So the last part of this video is going to be, you all know how to do your Mod Podge base coat and a bit of dry brushing but I'm gonna do it anyway, because I want to have three of these for my final shot. So, Mod Podge. Pre-mixed black paint and Mod Podge. Uh, if you want to know the exact quantities and etc., I would highly advise going over to Black Magic Craft, because he has done tutorials, Jeremy's done tutorials and that. And, yeah. I'm only gonna do tutorials about stuff that I actually think might benefit people. I'm now talking crap, so I'll just get on with a bit of painting. I'm just going to use my carving knife to help me out with painting the last little bit. Okay guys, Mod Podge and Black Paint is done. Um, I dried it very quickly with a hairdryer, so it's got some parts that have pulled a little bit, but that'll just look like shiny hue and stone. Um, so, <clears throat> first um, I've got graphite gray, and I'm just gonna be doing dry brushing, both colors, so, and, just very roughly. Now, in the Tabletop Crafters Guild, there are some incredible painters of minis and things like this. Jeremy as well over, he does, he's got his own technique. I'm really new to the painting side of things. So for me, I'm just slapping on to my tastes. Uh, this is not a tutorial on the painting side of things. You guys know how to paint stuff way better than me. Uh, but I'm just gonna complete the project my tests. So 
So yeah, hit it once with the graphite gray all over. Graphite gray uh, acrylic paint. It doesn't look like it's made an incredible amount of difference, but it's subtle, but it's there. And then the next one that I've got is neutral gray value five acrylic paint. So we're gonna do a bit of that. And again, this, this time I'm gonna try and get the brush quite dry. And for the last pass, I got some of this titanium white and I just mixed it in to make a lighter color gray. So yeah, this is a bit of a rush job because I'm trying to make a video for you guys, but you can still see that it looks awesome. I love it. No, I think probably too much of that. So I'm just gonna use my hands. Look at my awesome professional techniques. Not, ta-da! There we go, guys. That is the full process of how I made from scratch my Dwarven Pillars. And now I have three. I'm building a collection. I'm gonna be able, be able to hold something up pretty soon. Um, and I'm actually going to be making one more of these this Sunday. Um, I'm joining Colin Bressy um, at the Crazy Crafter channel for a live carve session. And we're gonna chat, we're just gonna chat about all things D&D and all things tabletop crafting. So if you wanna get a piece of this foam and join us on Sunday at 6 p.m. UK time, and I think that that's 10 a.m. in California, that's what I think, because that's where he lives. Um, yep, we're gonna do carving, Colin's gonna do some carving, I'm gonna do some carving, we're gonna try and make some, I'm gonna make one of these live. Um, if you guys wanna join in, bring your XPS foam, have a chat, you can ask qu questions about carves and cuts. Uh, um, that is the end of this video. Thank you so much guys for tuning in, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope it's useful. All the best, bye. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I just wanted to say, if you fancy helping me out, um, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications, all of the usual YouTube mumbo jumbo, um, but it really does help, um, encourages me to make more projects and stuff, which I really want to do, and I do want to grow the channel. Also, please share the video with anyone who you think might want to make one of these things, or just share, share with crafters in general. Um, I think people enjoy making these and will feel proud of the result because carving yourself is quite satisfying. So, see you next time, hopefully. Bye.